The purpose of this learning module is to explain how to read a flood insurance rate map and a flood insurance study. Since the 1970s, FEMA has been creating, storing, and updating flood hazard maps for NFIP communities across the United States. Flood insurance rate maps, or firms, are the primary tool for governments to mitigate the effects of flooding in their communities. Intended to reduce future damage and provide protection for property owners through an insurance mechanism that allows premium to be paid by those most in need of protection, Maps show areas subject to flooding based on historic, meteorological, hydrologic, and hydraulic data, as well as open space conditions, flood control works, and community development. Features on a flood insurance rate map include common physical features such as major highways, secondary roads, lakes, railroads, streams, and other waterways, special flood hazard areas, or SFHAs, also known as flood zones, base flood elevations, VFEs, or depths, flood insurance risk zones, such as A, A, E, and X, and areas subject to inundation by the 0.2% chance or 500-year flood in zone AEs only. FEMA distributes maps to many users, citizens, insurance agents, real estate brokers, community officials, lending institutions, and federal agencies all use them. Flood maps have a role in the administration of floodplain management regulations, mitigation of flood damage, and determination of whether insurance is required. To prepare maps, FEMA and its cooperating technical partners, in Kentucky, the Kentucky Division of Water, conduct engineering studies referred to as flood insurance studies, or FISs, which will be discussed in greater detail later in this module. Using the information from the FIS, engineers and cartographers delineate special flood hazard areas on flood maps. These areas are subject to inundation by a flood that has 1% or greater chance of being equaled or exceeded in any given year. This type of flood is commonly referred to as the 100-year or base flood. The 100-year flood is not a flood that occurs once every 100 years. In fact, this statistical flood has a 26% chance of occurring during a 30-year period, the length of many mortgages. The 1% annual chance flood is a regulatory standard used by many agencies to administer floodplain management programs and by the NFIP as a basis for insurance requirements nationwide. Copies of your local flood maps may be viewed at your local repository, usually a local planning and zoning office, or from the FEMA Map Service Center at msc.fema.gov. The index serves as a guide to map sheets found on a flood map. Since the geographic coverage of a flood map may be quite large, FEMA divides the area into sections called panels. The index is provided to indicate what areas are shown on each map. Each map for your community is called a panel. When a firm contains multiple panels, that means that the flood map will not fit on one page. The number of panels depends on the community size and the scale of the panels. Several elements are common to all flood insurance rate maps. The title box includes the community name, panel number, date, and other necessary identifiers for the map panel. The legend provides information which explains the symbology of the map panel and allows the user to differentiate between the different risk zones and or the floodway on the map. The body of the map displays the map content. On an index, the body will usually only display primary features like major roads and corporate limit. On a panel, there will be more detail than the index, including secondary roads, bridges, flood hazard information, and often an aerial photo in black and white. Countywide flood map indices are available for all counties in Kentucky. The countywide flood map displays the entire county and incorporated areas. It may also include more than one community. The community boundaries are shown along with the numbers and position of individual panels. All panels may not be printed, so panels printed are listed in the title box. Several elements are found on all map panels, including the floodplain boundaries, which show the 1% and 0.2% annual chance floodplain. The hazard area designations appear as light and dark tints. Dark tints indicate a greater flood hazard. Light indicates a lesser flood hazard. Base flood elevations are shown as a line and label which indicates the water surface elevation in relation to a standard set of geographic elevation, most often North American Vertical Datum 1988. Zone division lines separate special flood hazard areas with different zone designations and differing base flood elevations. Flood insurance risk zone designations indicate the magnitude of flood hazard in specific areas of a community. River mile markers identify the distance in miles from a reference point on a major water course. Streamlines identify the location of the watercourse. To obtain information about a specific property, first use the flood map index to determine which panel your property of interest is located on. Using the panel number determined from the index, find the panel that shows the property. Most maps have aerial imagery on them to allow a user to identify a specific structure. If imagery is not available, 
known property dimensions and the flood map scale must be used to determine where the property is located. Using the dimensions of the property from a tax assessor's map, plat map, or legal description, convert the known dimensions to inches using the flood map scale and measurements on the flood map panel. Occasionally, a property or building is shown in the special flood hazard area, but the property or building is higher than the base flood elevation, often due to limitations of the mapping. To be sure the property or building should be considered in the special flood hazard area, a comparison between the elevation of the property or building and the BFE should be performed. If the lowest elevation of the property or the lowest grade adjacent to the building are below the BFE, then the property and building are in the special flood hazard area. If a property or building is inadvertently shown within the special flood hazard area or has been raised above the BFE by fill, FEMA can amend or revise the maps with a letter stating the property or building is not within the special flood hazard area. These letters are called Letter of Map Amendment or LOMA or a letter of map revision based on fill, or LOMER F. To estimate a BFE, the lines shown near the property on the firm can be used. When a property is between two BFE lines, you may estimate the BFE at the property by interpolating between these two base flood elevations. The BFEs on the map are only accurate to plus or minus a half foot. Therefore, for an accurate elevation number, you must refer to the flood profiles for the flooding source or the flood elevation tables that appear in the flood insurance study for the associated stream. Some special flood hazard areas do not have BFEs shown on the flood maps and are known as Zone A. Most Zone A streams in Kentucky have engineering models associated with them, and the Kentucky Division of Water can provide assistance in determining flooding elevations for these areas where elevations are not printed on the maps. An additional resource for Zone A's can be found at the web address shown on the slide and is called Managing Floodplain Development in Approximate Zone A Areas. Using the information in the Flood Insurance Study, or FIS, in conjunction with the Flood Insurance Rate Map, or FIRM, will enable you to determine the risk for a property and allow you to take actions that may prevent flood disasters or ensure against losses caused by floods. A FIS is a report prepared by FEMA that summarizes the analyses of flood hazards in a community. The analyses used to prepare the FIS are also used to prepare the FIRM, which was discussed previously in this module and is a map that shows the flood hazard areas in a community. The FIRM is the basis for floodplain management, mitigation, and insurance activities in the National Flood Insurance Program. The FISC provides information to supplement the firm. Eight sections and supporting information are found in each flood insurance study. The overview tells which communities are included in the FIS and explains that the study developed flood risk data can be used for determining flood insurance rates and assisting the communities in providing floodplain management. The purpose also explains that the federal criteria are a minimum and that state or localities may enact and enforce stricter floodplain and land use criteria than the minimum NFIP requirement. The authority for the NFIP identifies the National Flood Insurance Act of 19. The Flood Disaster Protection Act of 1973 and the National Flood Insurance Reform Act of 1994. Companies or government agencies that did the work incorporated into the FIS and FIRM are identified as well as the contract or interagency agreement numbers under which the work was accomplished and the dates the work was completed. The coordination section identifies dates during which representatives of FEMA met with the community officials to discuss the scope of the study, identifies which flooding sources were to be studied by detailed or approximate methods, and identifies which companies, communities, and federal agencies were represented. Sources of additional information may have been incorporated into the flood insurance study or flood insurance rate map, but were not contracted or paid for by FEMA. These are identified as well. Finally, dates for the meetings at which the results of the study were presented to representatives of the community and other interested parties are noted, as well as which communities and agencies were present for the meeting. The scope of study identifies which flooding sources were studied by detailed methods of analysis and the geographical limits of the study, as well as upstream and downstream limits. Names of streams studied by approximate methods of analysis are also included in this section. A location of the community in reference to the county and or state is included via the vicinity map. The location, climate, and many of the physical characteristics are included in the community description. The types of information that may be included in this section are size and population of the community, the average rainfall and temperature, soil types, and names of the adjacent communities. The principal flood problems section identifies the causes of flooding within the community or region and identifies natural or man-made features that aggravate flooding within the community. Dates of past major floods within the community are provided. Details including the magnitude of historical storms, number of casualties, and the amount of damage caused to personal property, real property, and infrastructure are noted. Additionally, location of stream gauges, dates of operation, intervals of continuous operation, name of the agency that owns, operates, and maintains the gauge, and type of gauge might be included. 
Channelization projects are man-made channels or waterways that are designed to increase the flow carrying capacity of the channels and thereby reduce the flood elevation. For a channelization project, the information in this section includes the type of channel, grass, concrete, or other, the name of the agency or organization that constructed the channel, the date of construction, and the name of the agency or organization that maintains the channel. Also, the section indicates whether the base flood is contained in the channel and, if not, the extent of flooding outside the channel. Levees are main main structures, or fill, along a river that extend above the flood elevation to prevent lower areas from being inundated by the flood. The formation of this section includes the type of levee, earthen, concrete flood wall, agricultural, etc., the name of the agency or organization that maintains the levee, the level of protection provided by the levee, the frequency of floods for which the levee provides protection, and the historical performance of the levee. Dams are man-made structures built across a stream or river that impound water and reduce the flow downstream. Dams are often used to create retention basins, reservoirs, and ponds. For a dam, the information in this section includes the type of dam, earthen, concrete, or other, the name of the agency or organization that constructed the dam, date of construction, name of the agency or organization that maintains the dam, purpose of the dam, and historical performance of the dam. Also included in this section are key dimensions and elevations of the dam, width, height, top elevation, spillway crest elevation, normal pool elevation, and emergency spillway elevation. In addition, details on operation or emergency plan may be included in this section. Non-structural flood control measures include floodplain ordinances that are more restrictive than the NFIP minimum, ordinances that reduce runoff potential by restricting watershed development or easements that designate open space in the floodplain. An explanation is provided for why any projects detailed within this section were not recognized by FEMA as providing protection from the base flood. The engineering methods section provides a brief explanation of probability and recurrence intervals for flood. It explains how a 100-year flood can occur more than once over a short time interval. Hydrologic analyses are studies of the amount of water flowing in a stream during flood events. Generally, flood insurance studies are concerned with the peak rates of flow or discharges in streams for the 10%, 2%, 1%, and 0.2% annual chance recurrence intervals. The peak discharges are typically measured in cubic feet per second, or CFS. Data used to determine the peak discharges or the agency from which the discharges were obtained are identified. The data used to determine the discharges may include topographical maps, gauge data, land use or zoning maps, and soil information. Detailed explanation of the methods used to determine peak discharges for streams and why that methodology is appropriate for the watershed are outlined as well. Typical methodologies are regression equations, gauge data analysis, drainage area discharge curves, and rainfall runoff modeling. The summary of discharges table briefly summarizes the peak discharges and drainage areas at locations along the stream. Not all discharges used in the analyses are shown on the table. The locations chosen for the table are generally at physical features shown on the maps. Typically, peak discharges for the commonly analyzed recurrence intervals are shown in the tables. Hydraulic analyses are studies that determine the water surface elevations on streams. Flood insurance studies are primarily concerned with the 1% annual chance or 100-year elevations, also known as base flood elevations or BFEs. However, the 10, 2, and 0.2% recurrence intervals are also often determined. Typical information used in hydraulic analyses may include cross-sections, roughness coefficients, and starting water surface elevations. Methodologies used to compute the flood elevations in the various components used in calculations are described. The most common methodology used to calculate flood elevations for a stream is a step backwater computer program such as HECRAS. For the complex flooding situation, a computer program that models two-dimensional flow may be used. This section also indicates the vertical datum to which all elevations are referenced. Vertical datum is important to ensure that like values are being used when the information in the flood insurance study is being compared to other vertical data. In Kentucky, most studies have been conducted using the North American vertical datum of 1988. Floodplain boundaries show the areas that would be inundated by a flood of a given frequency. The firm shows the floodplain boundaries for a flood having 1% annual chance of occurring with the 100-year flood, and in some areas the flood having a 0.2% annual chance of occurring the 500-year flood. The section indicates the scales, contour intervals, and dates of the topographic maps used to delineate the floodplain. The floodplains are delineated using the flood elevations at 
cross sections or transect and by interpolating between cross sections or transects using topographic maps. The floodways section defines the floodway and explains how it is used for floodplain management. Also, this section lists which streams have floodways and describes how the floodways were determined. The floodway data table presents the results of the floodway analyses at the cross sections shown on the flood maps. For insurance applications, areas on the firm are designated by zones based on the flood risk potential computed in the analyses. This section identifies and defines all zones shown on the effective firm. Older flood insurance studies, or FISs, may include a flood insurance zone data table. This table presents information that was used for insurance applications but is not used any longer. The firm section briefly describes the purpose of the firm for flood insurance and floodplain management. Section 7 identifies other studies of flooding in the area and indicates if these studies agree or disagree with the flood insurance study. Also included in this section is a list of previous FISs that are superseded by the publication of the new FIS. The location of data section identifies the FEMA Regional Office and the Community Map Repository, the local community office that keeps a copy of the FIS and gives their addresses. The Bibliography section, as the name indicates, lists references used in the creation of the FIS. The Revision section is included in some flood insurance studies and provides brief information on revisions to the FIS. The information provided may include the development or project that necessitated the revision, the name of the agency or engineering firm that performed the analyses, descriptions of the hydrologic or hydraulic analyses, and identification of the maps used to determine the floodplain boundaries. A flood profile is a graph of the flood elevations along the center line of a stream. The flood profiles in the flood insurance study show the profiles for the 1% annual chance or 100 year event and also often show the profiles for the 10, 2, and 0.2% or 10, 50, and 500 year flood events. Other information shown on the flood profiles include the cross sections shown on the flood maps, the location of the streets crossing the stream, the elevation of the stream bed, and other hydraulic structures. The flood profile should be used to determine the precise base flood elevation for an area in the floodplain rather than the firm on which the base flood elevations are rounded to the nearest whole foot. From this learning module, you should have learned what information is included in the flood insurance study and how to use the information in conjunction with the flood insurance rate map to determine flood risk. Knowing this will enable you to make wise decisions to reduce risk from potential flood hazards. For more information, contact the Risk Communication Specialist for the Kentucky Division of Water. This concludes our learning module on how to read a firm and fist.